of the biggest reasons I'm so impressed with Paris is that here is the, the best example of what they call the grand design of a city where you have these huge beams or avenues or boulevards, whatever you call them, connecting with each other and across them are incredible epic landmarks. So here I'm at this arch at uh, the Louvre and when I walk straight I see the Arc of Triumph all the way in the distance near the horizon and in between is an obelisk so the whole thing was planned out and once you get there you can start going to another side and you see the palaces near the Eiffel Tower and then the Eiffel Tower itself and that also is a very grand design that spans multiple kilometers what I'm approaching in the distance and what I'm looking at right now is simply incredible it's like a living painting and what it is is from here is the end of the Garden of the Louvre. You're exiting the Louvre, which is you're exiting the era of the great kings of France. And through that gate there, past the obelisk, you enter the new era, which is that of the revolution. So it's um, this street here that begins with the end of the garden. This side you see the Louvre. And on this side you see the Arc of Triumph. So it's it's highly symbolic of France through the ages where you see now going this way is like the progression of time. I'm now standing on the edge of the Louvre's garden next to a big obelisk and this is an important place because from here you can see many of the great attractions in France and when I say attractions here it's more like great colossal works of historic importance more so <laughs> than something to just um, look at for whatever reasons you may be used to when you're being a tourist but from here what I'm going to do is there's the Eiffel Tower and there's more buildings there but right ahead here is probably the most famous street in the world Champs-Élysées just about everywhere you look in Paris there are stunning works of art in the form of fountains and I always wondered why they went all out on fountains like they really are impressive and it's among the best I've ever seen the reason is actually that they are not all decorative and pompous they were built to supply the city with fresh water to overcome disease so in the way the grandeur and the, the glory depicted on them actually symbolizes humanity overcoming nature and in fact the ill parts of nature the disease and so on and that's why they are so important that they are ornate and expensive like this. I'm now walking down Champs-Élysées and it's a big road with at least four lanes and some even more bus lanes and it would be unpleasant to walk next to but it has very large sidewalks on both sides as well as series of trees lining it, many uh, rows of trees actually not just one or two so it actually is quite nice and you may think that we're done with the palaces but no right on the left here next to me are two very large palaces and here i am now standing in between two more palaces on each side of the street so one is here with this incredible gate right behind me and the other one is across the street over there and what's interesting about this palace is that it is it is newer it's uh, what's called art view and it's a resurrection of neoclassicism and baroque in later years and i believe it was built at the same time as the eiffel tower for the world expo Here you can see the two palaces in the same time and right across from them all the way down is one of the grandest palaces in the whole of Paris which I will visit soon after. And you can see how there are three palaces here at the triangle. The whole thing is designed immaculately with, on a large scale. Here is one of the sides of the Grand Palace featuring an incredible statue up top with four horses in very dramatic positions and a female statue up top. Here is now the commercial, more modern part of Champs-Élysées which even on a rainy day, on a Monday, is still quite crowded. 
I think this is the most popular, popular place for people in Paris to go down and hang out. Where well, yeah, this street is now all what you would expect in a modern city, really. Yeah, it has the older architecture, but it's um, all cafes and stores and banks and offices and so on. So it's probably where a lot of people go to work as well. And of course, it has all the little cafes which Paris is famous for. All the big fashion brands have their offices, their stores here. Like here we have Nike and Rolex and others. And they're all quite ornate. Definitely trying to shine here and set the style for the whole world from this street. A big Louis Vuitton store here on Champs Elysees, and of course, the owner of Louis Vuitton is the richest person in France by far. So it makes sense he would make a centerpiece here. A tornade store here by Dior. Very nice. I do like to see examples of the gorgeous things we can do in, in today's world versus cement and all that. But yeah, this is very nice. I'm approaching another centerpiece of Paris and that is the Arc of Triumph built for Napoleon's victories and it's a lot bigger than I ever imagined I didn't realize it's this big but what's more interesting is I'm seeing people on the top there which is telling me that obviously there's a way to get up here it is, you know it's glory you actually have to have an underpass to get to the Arc itself right here and it says access. Wow, well, that was a, quite the climb. But this is it. The best view in Paris so far. Wow. So that over there looks like the new Paris If you continue down the street which I was walking on You will end up at the skyscrapers which is rather interesting I will try to make it there to see what they're up to there Here's the big road I took Champs-Élysées this one in particular in the middle and it goes all the way to the Louvre, which is big enough that you can still see it here. As I said, we have the Eiffel Tower, which is really close actually. Here you can see uh, very well illustrated the grand design of Paris, where the arc is in the center of all these beams which connect right here in a big circle. So you see how the city, all the big boulevards connect in one place. And if you keep going around, you keep seeing more and more of these giant boulevards. Many of them are connecting right here. This is the biggest hub of all the roads in Paris. Very, very well designed city. It's like a big star. Everything converges here. That's how this traffic even works. You can see it over there. It's just madness. There are definitely not lanes and it's going in different directions. down now and this arc really is colossal I never knew it was this big just here is the shape where the arc is where I just was um, here Champs Elysees where I came up on it the biggest and then as soon as you get through the arc here is La Grande Army uh, Avenue and that's where I am right now apparently that leads to a big park as well so it should be very close to me and then beyond that is where I see the new Paris
things are already changing here and it's all becoming modern. Out here the traffic is much worse and you can see the architecture is dramatically different as well. This looks like it was done in the 20th century and already looks a lot more stripped down, not ornate and not so charming. When you walk forward you see a pretty crazy difference. This is something that I guess science fiction writers may have dreamed up. I think across from here with these balconies is some kind of dwelling. Quite, quite different. And above there looks like corporate headquarters look like blades, like knives or barbed wire at the top, razors. To go from that over there, the old, charming, elegant Paris of old, into this kind of dwelling, to me it looks like an amazing fall from grace. And it's little doubt why modern people feel often depressed and they find the lack of meaning to surround them and it's pervasive and hard to shake because look at how we have chosen to to live now this is to me unbearable and it's a very stark existence i i wouldn't want to live this way on this side we see more of this kind of architecture which i'm assuming is from the 60s or something it, it looks like brutalism to me with a little bit of decoration and here we see the brand new type of architecture which is entirely made of aluminum and glass usually and also has very little ornate elements here this is simply stunning to me how repetitive and, and unkept this is compared to all the rest of Paris there's more of it on this side. Is this really how we want to live in this century? Here they've tried to cheer up the vibe with a little Santa falling out of the window. Because man, this is stark. This is this is depressing. The part I do like are these pathways. Um, footbridges connect all these buildings. And that is good. That gives you that science fiction concept of the vertical city interconnected you can stay above ground there are many such movies and games and originally there were illustrations in science fiction journals where they came up with that and now it exists right here which i like a lot it's not all bad let's put it this way more and more work is being done so this is quite of a new part of paris here you see a lot of it is still under construction. Here we have what is supposed to be art, but it's really tubes, cylinders, with some tiles, you know. Where is the amazingness of the old age, where everything was ornate with elegance and patterns resembling nature and so on. Check out the brutalism. How does this make you feel? I don't like it. It is like this giant rough concrete thing hanging over your head, making you feel small and removing any beauty from the landscape. This is really postmodernism when all these ideas of killing the past are to be made real into an environment and you see what the future looks like if we don't change our thinking. Just about everything here is based on geometry. There's nothing nature inspired, there's nothing curved. Some things are slightly curved but even they're crude and made of geometric panels of some sort like the sphere there also geometry and all made of rectangular panels 
here is the enormous insane arch oh my god this is insane wow this is so brutal this is neo brutalism what you're seeing here it was made recently but is as brutal as it gets you can see the size of people sitting around this is insanely big and it actually serves as a building so you can count how many floors 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. It appears to be exactly 30 stories, 30 floors up. So it's two 30 floor towers joined at the top. In the middle, there's a um, strange metal and canvas structure. What would this aim to inspire? I wonder, you know, when you create environments, you aim to inspire something. What exactly do you aim to inspire here? When I got up and I looked out from the arch, I looked exactly at the Arc of Triumph, which I stood on just about an hour or so ago. It took me over an hour, I think, to walk here. So the grand design of Paris is still at play because this whole thing is made to seamlessly connect all the way to old Paris through this giant boulevard, which is the biggest in the city. And now this one is a new city. This is the newest part of Paris, which is very, very different. This is France's view or vision of entering the new era. This is how it feels. It's, um, it kind of leaves you speechless, to be honest. This view that I see and the entire walk that I did all the way from the Louvre to here I walked for hours and hours and I did that for a reason I, I wanted to see France through the ages and I did and now I'm in the current age so you can see how they did this out here way out and not in the middle they, they are not destroying old Paris that would be completely insane uh, they're keeping it as is and hopefully maintaining it well, you also see that they do have a vision of the future here or even the present that is already here uh, but they've spaced it out and they are keeping their treasure and hopefully they get to be a main player in the new era because they were so so strong in previous eras and they were able to give the world so much so much of all kinds of achievements and I would like to see what they can do in this era and it seems like they've begun here for better or for worse they've chosen a very brutal style but perhaps it can be improved on or polished or transformed into something appealing um, there is in a way a certain charm in this brutal style but that charm it kind of warps your mind it, it makes you something else and that has to do with a whole other topic of how our own nature is changing and as we are changing our environment with really broad strokes of the brush we are no longer delicately, delicately altering this and that way the class, like the classic world was the classic world would harvest marble and then erect columns but it would not entirely remake huge swaths of land like this overnight that power is new and we need to learn to be careful with it